Good morning. This is the way to a wonderful life. Please know with me now, right now, there is a power within you. It is the Christ within you, and it can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness. It responds to you. For this is the power that dwells within you, and so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California, teaching from the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus, the wisdom of the ancients, and the evolutionary science of mind. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbates.tv. Bates on the radio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com by going to YouTube.com and putting in the search box The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel. That's The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel, and you'll find over 95 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24 7 in both English and Spanish. You can also go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and put in the search box. Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, this is a healing and teaching ministry where we go beyond religion and we focus on those simple yet profound healing principles given to us by the mastermind Jesus so that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it, for we believe and we know that God responds to us by corresponding to our faith and our belief that with God, all good things are possible. With God, all good things are possible. Now, you can send me your prayer requests, your questions, your comments about this program, and you can also send a faith offering, a donation, or a tithe in support of this radio ministry, which I will deeply appreciate. And you can do that from the websites revbates.tv or rev dates on the radio.org or you can mail those to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B A T E S, P O Box one one seven three, P O Box one one seven three, Palm Springs, California, nine two two six three. Once again that's P O Box one one seven three, Palm Springs, California, nine two two six three. And you can leave me a telephone message in the Los Angeles area at 818-476-0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778-5677. Once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California. This program was not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live, and our Way to a Wonderful Life message for today is titled, Enjoy Life Now. It has an expiration date. Enjoy life now. It has an expiration date. So can we believe that life is a gift and not a test? Through all the times we have felt tested, have we ever thought about who created the test? And if we did, what was our answer? If the answer was anything but ourself, then we need to ask again. We didn't arrive in this world believing that life is a test. We learned it from the world both consciously and unconsciously. Life is not a test. Life is a gift, and the ancient mystics and the modern mystics all agree that this is the truth. Yet so often we find people refusing to accept the gift today. They say tomorrow is a better day, or we may hear people say someday I'll do this or that, or somehow, some way, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting my life together. Or that, that somehow, someday, I'm just hanging in there. I mean, we heard people say, oh, I'm just hanging in there. Well, quit hanging in there and do something. Start living this life today. Enjoy life now. It has an expiration date. That does not mean that we're not in this eternal life of the spirit, because our spirit can never die. But this individualized expression of who we are and what we're about in this life 
this does have an expiration date. And that someday, that someday will never appear on our calendar. I'm going to tell you right now, we all know that. And this all, this all may seem very trite and very simplistic, but it is the unconscious truth for far too many of us. We fail to become aware of the gift today because we are either still living in the past thinking about all the things, all the things that happened, all the, all the good things and the bad things, that we're still back there in the past, or we're yearning for the future. We're thinking, oh, oh, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. No, today is the best day we're going to have, so let's have the best day we can possibly have by thinking this is the best day I'm going to have, I'm going to have my best day now, my best day now, you know. Joel Osteen talked about having your best life now. Well, we got to begin by having our best day today, one day at a time, one day at a time. Let's have our best day today. Let's make the best better in whatever it is that we're going through, whatever it is that we're, we're trying to accomplish, whatever it is that we're seeking to experience. Now, religions have tapped into this mindset that blinds so many to the joy of life by creating a heaven out there somewhere that promises to give us peace and joy and rest from all the tests that we have struggled through and perhaps failed in this thing called life. But the wise people know that the hereafter is a transition, not a destination. Neither the here or the hereafter can give us any more then we can accept for ourselves right now, right where we are. There is no greater God in the beyond than there is in the here and now. We must realize this, that God is omnipresent, omnipresent throughout the universe, omnipresent throughout any dimension of the world that we can imagine. So in him we live and move and have our being right here and now, and we will be in him and in him we live and move and have our being when we transition into new life, into that, that new calling or adventure that God has planned for us at somewhere unknown to us at this point. But we must trust in the divine, the divine impulse within us to know that God is always present, that God is here and now, and start believing this truth and accepting this truth and begin to let our light so shine right where we are. Let our light so shine. Let the love within us, let the joy within us, let the peace within us, let all those things come through in our life experience today. Jesus said, pray believing that you have. And he could also have said, hey, accepting, accepting the good life, the joyful life, the happy life. We all feel the need. The, the mystical Ernest Holmes tells us in, words, in his book, Words That Heal Today, we all feel the need of an intimate and personal relationship with the Spirit, with God. We need the personal experience not only of conscious communion with God, but equally we need the assurance that God will respond. We must feel that when we talk to the Spirit, we actually commune with the Spirit, with God. Otherwise, we shall have no sense of personal response. Communion means that something goes out and something returns, that we not only seek God, but that we find God. And there is no such thing as a one-sided communion unless the response is there, the attempt to hold communion ends in emptiness and futility. We must gain the assurance that God not only hears, but God responds, that we are not talking to a vacuum or attempting to commune with the emptiness of space. So we must take these truths into our mind and let ourselves begin to believe in a greater way, begin to accept in a greater way that, that God has something for us. And let's think about this word God. There are those who refrain from using the word God because they feel that it has been twisted to conform to something that is an affront to their intellect. Yet the simplicity of the word has been lost by both those who refrain from using it and many of those who do. Jesus didn't use the word God, but used the word Father instead because he identified with God differently than those who had defined God before him. Jesus said that the Father is a spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. The Father is a spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And so how do we do that? How do we begin to worship God in spirit and, and in truth? And let's look at some words here from the great James Dillett Freeman. 
from his book, B. It's called B-E-B, exclamation point. You can buy this book on Amazon.com, although it's not available on BarnesandNoble.com. It's a very old book. <clears throat> but we read, there is a prayer that asks for things and a prayer that asks for thoughts, and there is a prayer that asks for nothing but gives all. I have prayed for many things, he writes. I have cried aloud for help. I have wheedled and bargained and demanded, but what have I ever really prayed for except to know that I am a child of God, a part of God? I have seen the beautiful bird of truth fly overhead and would hold it in my heart. I would know God and understand my relation to him, and I would know him and know myself, not with an intellectual knowing, but in every fiber of my mind and heart, and this is why I pray. For this is a knowing that does not come from study, but only from prayer. There are many kinds of knowing. Sometimes the mind studies life as it studies a book. It skims over the surface and absorbs not life, but words, which it calls life. It is one thing to read a book on aerodynamics. It is another thing to fly. As a bird knows flight by flying, I would know life by living. And I would know God not as a word, but as a living presence in my life. I am the green plant of God, and I would know him as the leaves of a tree know sunlight. I would absorb him and be absorbed in him. And I would make his substance mine and his life mine so that I can make my life and substance his. I would use him to be used by him. And this is why I pray. And that's from the great James Dillett Freeman from his book titled B. That's B like boy, B-E, exclamation point. And you can find that book on Amazon.com. Jesus said that the Father is a spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. He didn't identify God as a far-off deity that is separate and apart from us, but as a spirit that is not only close and intimate and available to us, but is the very life of us, the animating force of intelligence that has infinitely individualized itself in us and as us. There is no life separate and apart from God any more than the wave can have an existence apart from the body of water that created it. Scientists and all the genius of physics have not been able to recreate that which God has created, nor have they been able to fully define God, or to truthfully speak that there is no God. And it is this great mystery of God that makes life so truly wonderful in so many ways for all of us. Religion, unlike the scientists and physicists throughout history, has defined God based on superstitions and the finite knowledge of God that man, and I'm using the word man generically, has understood or sensed. But too often this hellfire and brimstone God is religion has taken on a falsity that resembles a fairy tale or a monster, an arrogant, ginormous creature that terminates life and is something to fear rather than a spirit that creates an active expansion in life in all living things, in all living things. The soul, the spirit, the soul never dies. We must understand that. The soul of us never dies. That's that spirit of consciousness within us, that spirit of awareness Within us, it never dies. It is always moving, always acting, because it is always a part of the spirit, just like the wave is part of the ocean. As long as the ocean is providing that that impulse to the wave to be formed and to be expressed, it shall be formed and to be expressed, and that's the way our relationship is with God. God, in reality is the ultimate affirmation of life itself. God is, in, in reality, is the ultimate affirmation of life itself. When we read in the scriptures that we are created in the image and the likeness of God, that image and likeness means that we have a part of, a part of God's power, a part of God's spirit, and a part of God's intelligence within us. And that's why God is imparted to us the ability to take dominion and authority over those things that concern us, the, the, the ability within us to give us the ability to control our thoughts and do with them what we will, 
to make our choices and the realization that there's a consequence to all the things that we believe and hold to be true for ourselves. There's a consequence in all the things that we choose to believe in and, and consider to be true for others as it moves through our consciousness, moves through our mind as a fact or a fiction. Each and every one of us have that opportunity every day to look beyond the physical, look beyond the material, look beyond all that we see and close our eyes to the world and look up and see the vision of life being wonderful and beautiful and abundant and good and healthy and happy and realize that in that, in that feeling of inspiration, that feeling of motivation, that we are in tune with the infinite, the infinite that created each and every one of us, infinitely individualized a part of itself in us, as us, and for us. And that's why the mastermind Jesus said, you are the light of the world. First he said, I am, that I am within you and me, I am within Jesus. I am the light of the world, so let your light so shine, he said. You are too the light of the world, so let your light so shine. It all comes down to a simple matter of awareness. So as we read in the scriptures, we can read Solomon's words in Proverbs 4, 7, 4, 7, Proverbs 4, 7, with all thy getting, get understanding, with all thy getting, get understanding. In these words, we discover that the only God that will ever matter to us is the God that we discover within our own consciousness or soul. And we don't discover God within our soul from refraining from living the life abundant, but by seeking to live each day to the fullest, the fullest of joy and happiness, the fullest of peace and love, and with an awareness of the beauty within the world in which we live, and the beauty within all others, and most importantly, the beauty that is within our own soul. This is truly worshiping God in spirit and in truth, and it is the pathway to a fuller realization of the truth of our being. And as a James Dillett Freeman writes, I would use him to be used by him. I would use God, the spirit, the power, the, the intelligence. I would use him to be used by him. In other words, God can only work for us by working through us, through our, both our heart and our soul, or as the mystical Ernest Holmes revealed, through love and law. We use God in all things in our life, not just the things that we want to heal or for the increase in the good that we desire to experience, but in the joy and the happiness that we feel when we get into the spirit of life by knowing that today is the day not yesterday or tomorrow, and especially not someday. So let's go back to those incredible words <clears throat> that just remind us that everything that we feel, this impulse that we feel to, be, to have a greater awareness of the spirit, this impulse that we feel in our heart to, to look beyond the physical, look beyond the material, is the normal and natural experience of every living thing, every living person, every living human being. So we can read these words from the mystical Ernest Holmes. These are from his book, Words That Heal Today, and you can buy this book at barnesandnoble.com, and you can also buy it at amazon.com. He writes, we all feel the need of an intimate and personal relationship with the Spirit, with God. We need the personal experience not only of conscious communion with God, but equally we need the assurance that God does respond to us. We must feel that when we talk to the Spirit, we actually are communing with it. We're having a dialogue, not a monologue. Otherwise, we shall have no sense of personal response. Communion means that something goes out and something returns, that we not only seek him, but that we find him. There is no such thing as a one-sided communion. Unless response is there, the attempt to hold communion ends in the emptiness and ends in futility. We must gain the assurance that God not only hears, but God answers and responds, that we are not talking to a vacuum or attempting to commune with the emptiness of space. And so we know from the, from the mystical Ernest Holmes that this is the truth for all of us. Even that, that short and small yearning of just, 
waking up in the morning, that, that yearning to wake up and be alive and, and get out of bed and to feel good about life and to energize our mind and energize our body. That is the impulse of the infinite moving through us. Now, we go back and we look at those words. Do, do we believe that life is a gift or do we believe that life is a test? So we must take it into our mind that God has gifted us with life. But not only has God gifted us with life, but let's lift up our awareness just as Jesus did, just as Isaiah did, and start realizing, start realizing just as Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John did, and start realizing that not only did God gift us with life, but God imparted to us a part of itself, a part of its spirit, a part of its power, and a part of its intelligence, and that's why we are here. We are here to let God use us by using this power, this spirit, and this intelligence of God to do those things that not only bless us, but bless all who come into our our field of experience, our life experience, to bless the world in which we live and bless all those accordingly to our faith and our belief that we are a blessing to the world because God has blessed us first with this gift of life. And so we take that into our mind and we let it settle into our soul and we let it move through our heart with love and understanding. And then we begin to realize just as Solomon did, just as Jesus did, just as Paul did and just as Isaiah did, that God is our all in all that God is our everything. Not only in him we live and move and have our being, but we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. And that Christ is that image likeness of God, that spark of the divine that gives us the power, the spirit, and the intelligence to think the thoughts that will create for us an affirmation of a greater life, a more joyous life, a healthier and happier life, right now, right where we are. So before I end the program this morning, I want to go back and I want to give everyone out there, I want to share these words with everyone out there in this radio audience and hopefully this this message that's going to be published, or it's already published on RevBates.tv, will go out to so many people today and be a blessing to them because these are words that bless me and I know if they bless me, they're going to bless you too. And once again, I'm going to read this one more time, and this time I'm not going to ad-lib. I'm just going to let these words come through the way James Dillett Freeman wrote the words. It's from his book titled B, that's capital B-E, exclamation point, and you can buy this book on Amazon.com, or you can just go and you can click on RevBates.tv and go to the weekly message, and you can see these words and you can print them out if you want, or you can just take the words that mean something to you, take the words that that inspire you and motivate you to be more in tune with the infinite love and joy and peace and happiness of God. You can just take those words and write them down and put them into your heart as well. There is a prayer, he writes, that asks for things and a prayer that asks for thoughts. And there is a prayer that asks for nothing but gives all. I have prayed for many things, he writes. I have cried aloud for help. I have wheedled and bargained and demanded. But what have I ever really prayed for except to know that I am a child of God? I have seen the beautiful bird of truth fly overhead and would hold it in my heart. I would know God and understand my relation to him. And I would know him and know myself not with an intellectual knowing, but in every fiber of my mind and heart. And this is why I pray. For this is a knowing that does not come from study, but only from prayer. There are many kinds of knowing. Sometimes mind studies life as it studies a book. It skims over the surface and absorbs not life, but words, which it calls life. It is one thing to read a book on aerodynamics, It is another thing to fly. As a bird knows flight by flying, I would know life by living. And I would know God not as a word, but as a living presence in my life. I am the green plant of God, and I would know him as the leaves of a tree know sunlight. I would absorb him and be absorbed in him. I would make his substance mine and his life mine, so that I can make my life and substance here. 
I would use him to be used by him. And this is why I pray. That's from James Dillett Freeman from his book titled Be. And once again, you can find that book on Amazon.com or <clears throat> you can just go to my weekly message on TV and click on the weekly message and you can read that and you can print it and you can just write down the words that take you away from the physical and the material to that realization that when we look out into our world, we're only seeing half of the picture of this gift of life that is available to us, we must also look into that great unseen and realize through faith that our faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the, the substance of things hoped for, the, the evidence of things unseen, and realize that our faith draws unto us even a greater good than the good that we see in the world, or it draws to us all that is necessary for us to have the awareness that the life that we are living is a gift. It is a gift of the presence of God, and the presence of God is always present so that we can understand this and realize this, that the presence of God is always available who will and will respond to us by corresponding to that which we believe to be true. So let us realize that life is eternal, but this individualized life of God that we are living right now has an expiration date. And so let's get busy and start living the life right now that we have hoped for, that we have dreamed about, that we have desired and yearned for, first in our mind, first in our thoughts, and first through the images that come through our divine imagination, and then before we know it, as within, so without. And we begin living that life right now, right where we are. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been my great pleasure to have you, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio this coming Sunday, every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. That's 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 Central Time. And be sure and go to RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio.org, where you can find the the weekly message that's published in both English and Spanish and, and Italian. And I want to thank Raul Feliciano Sanchez in Houston, Texas, for giving us the Spanish translation for that weekly message, and for Liliana Grand, Grande of Rome, Italy, for giving us the Italian translation of those messages. And once again, I want to, I, I, want, to I want to tell you that you can go to YouTube.com, YouTube.com, and you can put in the search box. The Way to a Wonderful Life channel. That's the Way to a Wonderful Life channel. And you'll find over 95 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. And you can also go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and put in the search box Reverend Henry Bates. That's B-A-T-E-S. And you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, you can write to me and send me your prayer requests. You can send me your questions, your comments about this program. And you can send a tithe, a love offering, a faith offering, or a donation in support of this radio ministry, which I will deeply appreciate. And you can do that from the website RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio.org. And you can also mail those to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Once again, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can leave me a telephone message in the Los Angeles area at 818 476 0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778-5677. Once again, this has been The Way to a Wonderful Life, coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California. This program was not pre-recorded, nor was it edited. It is always live. And once again, I want to thank everyone at KTYM. AM 1460 Radio for all the excellent service and all the all the uh, all the the great feeling that I get from them every every week and I want to bless Gary Rayers who who made his transition uh, this week at uh, and he was uh, the the manager at uh, KTYM that brought got this broadcast on the air and encouraged me to keep going with this 
this weekly message on KTYM AM 1460 radio. I want to bless him and just know that in my heart and my soul, I know that his spirit is reigning supreme somewhere in God's perfect world and God's good grace. And I, and just to send them all our love and our prayers. That's Gary Rayers from from KTYM AM 1460 radio in, in Inglewood, California. He made his transition this past week and and we want to bless him and just know that God is with him right now, right where he is and always will be. And that's the truth for him and the truth for you and me. So let's know it together as we say, God is my all in all. God is my everything. God is my guarantee that as I look at life as a gift, not as a test, that God shall respond to that faith and my belief that this is a gift. And I shall be gifted every day of my life. And so it is. Amen.